Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. All right, checking in on MJ. It's gonna be fairly brief, not a whole lot of updates, not a lot going on compared to yesterday. Cryptocurrency is insane, so I'm all jacked up after some very quick scalps, three minute trades, flipping fast orders, 8% moves. It's just nuts. So I need to go outside and calm down from that. But MJ. So CGC is in a lower high pattern four days in a row with a lower high. The bulls did buy at the end of the day. That's one thing that stood out is mostly in Canadian MJ, but some US MJ names as well. The end of the day, as SPY was dropping to the low of the day, Canadian MJ was closing up near the high of the day. So that stood out, but again, doesn't mean anything to me unless we get follow through. That's pretty much the theme of the MJ sector right now, follow through. Before we get into individual names, one thing I want to touch on, cryptocurrency going crazy. The best plays, I made a post about this on Twitter, the best plays for our money was cryptocurrency in 2017. Take that profit, put it in MJ, Canadian MJ, end of 2017, start of 2018. Take your profits from Canadian MJ, put them back into cryptocurrency in the lull, in the dead of winter when nobody cared about cryptocurrency, and then Bitcoin runs 400% in three months or whatever it is. So now we're going to look for cryptocurrency profits to come to MJ. I cannot think of a better use of cryptocurrency profits in the next few months to go into USMJ names. You want to be interested in names when they're in a lull and when there's nobody talking about them and you see so many people interested in Bitcoin now when it's run 400% in a few months. You should have been interested in Bitcoin when it was $4,000 and nobody cared about it. That's the way that these hype cycles work, but I want to get in before the herd and I want to have positions established when the hype and FOMO strikes. So the tricky part about this one the switch to Canadian MJ to compound profits was easy because we had the timeline for the run-up in the fall in 2000, what was it, 2017. We don't have that timeline on USMJ, so timing is a lot more tricky. But again, just in terms of selling into strength and buying weakness when you're confident that a significant move is going to be coming, that's the way to do things in my opinion. So you better believe that in my cryptocurrency videos, I'm going to be suggesting, and I already did today, that people start to explore other places, start to familiarize themselves, establish game plans, and potentially look for other places to put their profits to work once the hype and FOMO fades from whatever exponential bull run market we're looking at, whether it's gold or crypto or MJ. Fun stuff. So I need to see CGC bulls break 39.87 and really I need to see them break 40.66, the high of the double bottom bounce. So we held the double bottom and bounced that level but got no follow through. So pretty much bulls don't prove anything to me on CGC until we break 40.66. Otherwise we're looking down at 38.38, that double bottom. Cron's real tight. Essentially two daily inside bars in a row. A break of 15.65 is bearish. And we will then be looking down at a must hold 1525 and a break of 1601 is bullish, but we have multiple resistance levels right there. The double top at 1612. I'm looking at the low, high, higher, low, lower, high, higher, low. And how this pattern breaks is going to dictate whether we're looking up at 1690 resistance or 1525 support. ACB buying at the end of the day, still just lower highs on the daily time frame, still daily exponential resistance that the bulls have to get over. Bulls will start proving something to me on ACB if we can break 769. The most important levels for me are 807 and 816, but I'll start paying attention if we can break 769. And of course, the more space the bulls create, the better to try and change that daily trend and get follow through. Again, for everybody, we need daily trend changes. And you might say, well, isn't this a daily trend change? We pulled back and now we're trying for continuation. That's too brief. And while it is a support level, it's not a clear daily pullback for a higher low. It happened too quickly. APHA, daily inside bar again, break of 691 is bearish, break of 704 is bullish. So pretty much if we break bearish, our lower high of this equilibrium that has my fullest attention 
for early Jan early July will be set. If we break bearish, our lower high is 721. If we break bullish, our lower high has not been set yet and we'll still be watching for a lower high compared to 760. TLRY, pretty healthy consolidation overall. No bear volume, looking for the daily higher low. Has our daily higher low been established? Not yet. Break bull over 47.95 and our daily higher low has formed at 45.90. Break bear tomorrow from the daily inside bar and we have not found our daily higher low yet. So tomorrow's a pretty key day for TLRY. OGI, trying to build a base of support. Bulls don't prove a thing to me unless they break 661. So again, just keep it nice and simple. If the bulls don't break 661, I don't care what OGI is doing. If we break 661, I'll be interested and we'll see what the bulls can do from there. Hexo, still weak, close at the low of the day. No sign of the bulls here. Lack of support. Five psychological and then 498. Get the daily RSI beat up a bit more with the four hour RSI. And then I'll be interested. This little bounce first thing this morning cooled off the four hour RSI so it wasn't oversold this morning. I need another clear leg down for things to get extreme on a lot of time frames before I would be interested in playing an oversold bounce. Give me a, a four, five percent red day tomorrow, and then we would start getting to those extremes. TRST week 650 support being tested. Odds that it breaks are likely. We're seeing a pattern in MJ where we are breaking to lower lows and not getting much follow through. And that tells me that selling pressure is drying up. The bears are exhausting themselves to the downside. And while the bulls are not proving anything on offense to us yet, it is notable that bear breaks are not getting much follow through. And we'll point that out in some of the USMJ videos or USMJ names here. And again, TRST is, is doing everything that a USMJ name is doing right now, while the rest of the Canadian MJ sector definitely looks different. So that is notable. And we've been mentioning that for a while at this point. But for TRST, anything under 729, just a lower high. And I don't care about the bulls until that happens. And I don't care about an oversold entry because we are not oversold on the daily nor the weekly. Drop down closer to 594 and I'll look to potentially make a play off of that level. But I would need to see another solid 5% drop before I were interested. VFF, oversold bounce attempt. It's a potential daily bear flag. This bounce is not getting much follow through at this point, And we don't have an hourly trend change yet. Bulls have to break the high of today tomorrow at 1516 to change that hourly trend. Then we zoom out to the daily and we certainly expect a lower high, but at least at that point, the odds of a daily bear flag would decrease a bit. Don't forget our two week equilibrium, high, low, lower high, and we're scouting our higher low. We need a daily trend change for the bulls to be confident our weekly higher low has formed. 1312 is the must hold level. Currently we're bouncing off of 1424. It is possible to be a daily bear flag, see another leg down, but still hold 1312 key support. T God holding on. And again, this is another one of those names where we're breaking to a lower low, but getting no follow through. We broke by three pennies. So that's the criteria and the major pattern behind falling wedges, where you drop to lower lows and you don't get follow through. So T God is a falling wedge. We saw the IAN example in the last two videos. If you look at Monday, and then Tuesday's video, IAN falling wedge played out on the hourly time frame. T God bulls are really hoping this plays out on the daily time frame to try and break this momentum and see a shift for the bulls to at least have a brief time in the spotlight. So keep an eye on this pattern. Anything on the daily under 342 is just a lower high. We need to get over this downtrend resistance as well as break the price levels of lower highs. VGW still holding on. And we have to see the break of the multiple tops at 429. Must hold support is 394. But other than that, that's pretty much it. That's what we're watching. That is the range. And whichever breaks first is going to dictate what's most likely. With a bear break, we'll be looking more at an equilibrium. With a bull break, we're looking at continuation and confirmation of a trend change. And the potential that our monthly higher low is established as we shift focus back towards all-time highs. IIPR gave us the most likely scenario. Inability to break 137.78. So that was our four hour lower high that we were looking at. So all time high, low of the pullback, lower high. And now looks like we set a lower high and a higher low on the same candlestick. So let's see if it's a bit more clear on the hourly. Nah. Daily time frame. So high, low, lower high, higher low in the same candle. 
And now 118.44 is the most important support for me. And 134.78 is the most important resistance. I wouldn't be surprised to see a daily inside bar tomorrow as this range continues to tighten. And how this tightening range breaks is going to dictate either a new all-time high or weekly consolidation being underway. So that will be key for the short term. CL is starting to pull back more than the bulls would like. So it is still possible to see continuation, but the bulls need 1355 to be the low. I'd say at this point, if we break 1355 from here, the odds that we are going to see continuation will decrease significantly. And it would be more of the equilibrium setup. So again, we'll just draw it one more time. If we pull back some more, then we're going to be looking at this kind of daily range. And if we can hold the low of today and change the hourly trend tomorrow, the continuation possibility to change the trend does still remain. But bulls better show up tomorrow. C-Web, bulls trying to show up for our higher low. Daily inside bar, if it breaks bullish over 18.20 tomorrow, our daily higher low is established at 17.14. If it breaks bearish, then our daily higher low is not established yet. Depending on what volume looks like tomorrow, if we got a bull break, we are going to look for a lower high compared to 2070. The reason is that is still a solid 16% from where we stand. So the odds that we just see a 16% continuation move, not likely without a catalyst. We have the democratic debates tonight and tomorrow night. I don't think it's going to move the needle. The most significant event in my opinion would be if they asked about marijuana, that's not a given. That would be nice. But if they went down the line and everybody was pro marijuana and then they got to Biden who has been a bit iffy, if not a little bit negative. And if he were to come out as pro, that would pretty much just set the, the table, whether you believe him or not, but it would set the table for the market to begin pricing in that if a Democrat were to win, it would be pro MJ. And from here, if that's the case, and if, if whoever the Democratic Party nominates is pro MJ, the polls become very important because the more of a chance that a Democratic Party election could happen, the more the market will start pricing that in. So the polls will be very important once we start to see things shift as we get closer to the end of 2019. And once we get within a year of the election, pretty insane how early it starts in the US, but it's a an event and the media loves it. Gives them something to talk about for years in advance. Cure relief. So here's another example. We break to a lower low and so far, we don't get a ton of follow through. So we're watching the potential here as well of a falling wedge. It would be great if this sector could just all break out in unison. That's a pattern to watch, similar to T-God. So not only do we have to break resistance, but we have to break the price levels as well. So breaking the downtrend resistance line is great, but we have to break 1053 to get that follow through. OH. Ooh, nice close. I didn't look at that updated close. Daily higher low, very clearly established. The inside bar broke bullish, so it's almost like a little preview of what the C-Web bulls need to pull off. Double top still there. We have to break 930 tomorrow and get follow through. And I want to see volume. I want to see more than average volume if I'm going to be a believer in this daily trend change. Don't lose sight. When we change daily trends, we zoom out and we look for a weekly lower high to form. We have even more work to do to change any weekly trends. But changing a daily trend is step number one, and OH is fairly close to pulling it off. I still have my OH position from the initial bounce entered on Friday, really lucked out with timing. And now we're going to see how long I can hold it. I'd like to hold it for a long time, but I will adjust every day. TLRY, bulls need to hold 1335 and break 1517 to prove anything. Otherwise, if we break 1335, the bears keep control. And here's another one. This is a long drawn out. I don't really like that resistance line, but we'll see how it looks. It's just a channel. I was going to see if it was a wedge, but more of a channel and not even a great one because this resistance line is no longer in play because of how much we did pull back. So disregard that. Just need the daily trend change and it's not looking likely at this point. IAN, just sideways, inside bar today. Most important thing for me on IAN is the four-hour trend. And we are still in a downtrend. Most important resistance for me, break 442, and I'll start believing the IAN bulls are up to something. If we don't, then I won't. So 442, otherwise, is just a four-hour lower high, and we have our low of support, 387. 
Time for the Bulls to prove themselves. And even if we prove it on the four hour, it's still three or make that 478, which is the most important daily resistance for me and most important weekly resistance as well as that's the pattern of a lower high every single week for 13 weeks. And breaking 478 would change that, but not in the picture yet. 442 first. MedMen, a little bit of follow through. So we're in a pattern now with a higher low every day the last five days in a row. Bulls want to keep this up. We've taken out a couple resistance levels. 435, make that 335 is the next resistance level from here. When we do top out, we're just going to look for a daily higher low to form. While we change the trend, we have to remind ourselves we're just looking for a weekly lower high. And we've been struggling at this weekly exponential resistance every single weekly bounce attempt that we've seen in the last six months, seven months, has been a weekly lower high. So while the daily time frame was rejecting from this exponential resistance forever and now it's support, that's great. But we have another battle on another time frame that's looking very similar. GTII, bullish reaction, big bull volume. I forget if it was a if coverage initiated or what was put out. I think it was a, a paid group had something put out as well. Either way, daily higher low is now established at 1342. And breaking 1391 is a more convincing bull move than the, just this little speed bump that the bulls got over. This is a more clear higher low and higher high. But as everything else, exponential resistance, getting over it would be great. But then we just zoom out to the weekly and we look for weekly lower highs. So the, the real test will be once the sectors as a whole get these daily trend changes under their belts and it's not just a name or two, then can we change the weekly trends as well to really be meaningful? So we are still skeptical of bulls all over the place. We are not cutting them any slack or giving them any benefit of the doubt. They have to prove it to us. They have to prove it with bull volume, higher lows and higher highs on the daily. And then we anticipate that weekly lower highs are still going to form. But it's the scenario where the bulls give us as much space as they can on the weekly chart to form a weekly higher low and then try and change the weekly trend as we look towards July, August and end of the summer. I appreciate you watching. Do good things out there. I don't have an end of the video video today. I did get the ducks some food and they love it. So I'll share that video tomorrow, but I just don't have time. See you soon.